This is your host, The Real Ed Oliver and Brandon Scott. Today, we're going to talk about Tom Levera wrote an article that Ted Leonsis has fallen out of love with Bradley Bill. We're going to say we're going to talk whether we believe it's fact or fiction. Let's get to it. You are locked on Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Wizards your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. So Tom Lavero, the, the host, the writer for the Washington Times, a uh, longtime writer, he does a podcast with Kevin Sheehan as well. Um, he wrote an article about Ted Leonsis, calling him transparent Ted. Um, it, it, it's it's a, it's an article definitely going in on the Wizards and in, in the front and Ted Leonsis for sure. Um, so basically, an article he says that Ted Leonsis is, has fallen out of love with Bradley Bill and keeping him, and that Ted and that Tommy Shepard was reluctant to trade him. So I'm going to read the article here, and then we're going to talk about whether we believe that it's fact or fiction or, or cap, as the young people say. Um, so, quote, sources say there may have been friction between the two over the future of the Wizards' highest paid player. I'm talking about Tommy Shepard and Ted Leonsis. Bradley Bill, how funny is that sports betting evangelist Ace, Ace, Ace Rothstein's $400 million player is being sued by a fan because of an argument over a lost bet? Trading Bill has to have been a subject of debate within Wizards management. He makes $50 million a year and has not proven to be the kind of player that championship contenders are built on. He is a piece, a big piece. But the $251 million five-year max contract extension bill signed in June 2022 includes a real no-trade clause, which means that the Wizards have to approve any trade deal the Wizards try to make for him. Right now, Bradley Bill is the Wizards' general manager. Shepard loved Bill and was reluctant to try to trade him, sources said. Transparent Ted is believed to have fallen out of love after this season. Whoever the next general manager is will likely have that task of making that trade to help the Wizards rebuild yet again and one that Bill will agree to. That person won't be whoever's office is next to Tom Shepard's. So on a scale of one to 10, how, how much do you believe this article? Um, and how much do you believe that uh, Shepard Love Bill was reluctant to try to trade him? Sources said from, from um, Tom Lavero, but transparent Ted is believed to have fallen out of love after the season, which is pretty big news. If true, because we might see uh, the days wind down for Bradley Bill's wizard. If that is true. Um, from a one to ten level of optimism about this article, I'm about a seven to eight man because I think that Ted Leonsis is a businessman. You know, he knows that this off season is probably the best off season for this franchise to start from scratch and start over. You have, I mean, you, you're bringing in a new GM. You know, you got really a probational period of one year for West Sunset, pretty much. And you know, we both said that we were both intrigued to see. If you know what West could do with a young roster, whether he can, we can kind of bring the pieces in to implement the system, and, and I think that's what they're trying to do. But you know, looking at the actions of Ted Leonsis uh, going into the offseason, I'm 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 opti- I'm really optimist, man, because I think he really wants to make a change. He he recognizes and listen, um, it's been known that he listens and watches the podcast. He you know he, he goes on social media. You know he's he's actually responded to a few people <laughs> over the years. Uh, he. He knows the pulse of the franchise and, and uh, the fan base, man. You know, he understands the, the pulse, which is we're, we're, we are at a spot where we're tired of being in the gray area, where we're too bad to really get a good pick to really find these high impact players, but we're too, uh, too good, um, too bad to really make, make, you know, go past the first round. So it's just we're, we're in a gray area and he knows that, you know. So he, I think that major changes are coming. I think, you know, looking at Bill, right now is a good time to, to trade him. You know he's got he's got value now. Obviously he's not that sharp shooter like he used to be. He's more of a mid range guy, but he is still a g- really really good scorer in this league, and he has value. And you know, look the John Wall trade, the Russell Westbrook trade, they proved that really no contract right now is untradeable. You know, depending on the situation, you can trade Bradley Bill, especially you look at teams like Miami, which we're going to talk about a little bit about the playoffs, and maybe the LA Lakers. But you know, I think that he 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 sees the writing on the wall, which is. We got to make changes. You can't continue to do the same thing 
and expect different results. You got to make a change. And looking at the relationship between Ted and Tommy, yeah, that's that shines a whole new light. Um, because I, I was under the you know, I thought that both of them were like had this you know really good relationship with Bill. But if you look at Ted and his past history, look, he's always been about culture. You know, Gilbert Arenas got bounced out of here because of the gun situation, being on house arrest, and that, that subsequent mess. And then you got John Wall with the you know the gang signs and stuff here and there. And looking at Bradley Bill, the unfortunate situation where you know he flips the hat off a fan, and unfortunately, you know, he might you know had contact with him and then you know the lawsuit that follows. But you know, I think that lawsuit was kind of like the nail in the coffin for you know Ted. So yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting in the offseason, man. I really do. I think major changes are coming. And looking at the new GM. The fact that he said that finding somebody from the outside rang a lot to me, man, because I think that we have a real chance of really getting a good GM. And in my opinion, and I'm, I'm hearing Tim Conley, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I like Trajan uh, Landon out of New Orleans. Uh, Bob Myers, obviously, and then U Uziri in Toronto. But he's going to swing for the fences and try to get one of the three because, you know, you can't promote within and expect <laughs> different results, especially when the guy you promoted was a protege of the guy you fired. So I think he's finally, you know, reading the, the writing of the wall, man. It's time to make changes. So I'm really optimistic, man. And I think it's about daggone time in the 202 to see some major changes for the Wizards. Definitely 100%. Yeah, I mean, the point about the flipping the hat, um, I know Ted probably isn't happy about it. I do think that it's a small thing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too worked up about it, but we know how Ted is with image and culture. He really wants to have uh, – uh, I'm not choir boy co uh, culture, but he really wants it to be, you know, a clean slate, no um, past history or anything like that. Um, and you can kind of tell that with John where it rubbed the wrong way about the gang sign thing. He really wasn't happy about that. Um, so, yeah, maybe maybe he isn't happy about Bill. We don't we just don't know. But um, as far as this article, do I believe it or not? I don't know. I mean, it does sound uh, it, it's, it's just hard to believe for me because for them to give him a no trade clause that amount of money i think ted had to be of course 100 percent on board but could he have fallen out of love yeah he could have after seeing another 35 and 47 season how you, how can you really stay in love with anybody doing that not making the playoffs you try to build around bill since john wall left in, in 2020 you made the playoffs one time but even before that when john was hurt you still had that season where they didn't even they weren't even close to the plan or close to the playoffs um so i think ted he might be finally seeing the light where it's like okay where are you going with this? Bradley Bill's a great player, but building around him, doing this middle build, you, you're just not going anywhere anytime anytime soon. And then, you, of course, you see that you got to pay Kuz and Porzingis and build this amount of money at the same time. We know Ted doesn't want to go into the luxury tax. So he's thinking, like, if I have to go in the luxury tax just for this team who I don't even – I'm not even sure that they're going to make the play-in, then, yeah, I'm definitely falling – then I could see him falling out of love. So, But it, it is hard to believe. But I know Tommy Shepard. We know that he loved Bradley Bill. Bradley Bill, one of the Gilbert Arenas podcasts, and said that Tommy Shepard would tell him numerous times that I'm never going to trade you. I'm never going to trade you. So we could, I could definitely see that from Tommy Shepard. I could see Tommy Shepard falling in love with Bradley Bill for sure. Uh, but yeah, it means a lot because this this could mean that, like you said, bringing somebody out from the outside, bringing another GM from the outside, that he can really give this new GM full autonomy. And uh, Tom Lavera also says that the new general manager will likely have that task of making that trade to help the Wizards rebuild yet again. Um, is Tom is Lavero hearing that the new GM is going to have to come in and really, really trade Bill Bradley Bill is going to have to come to Bradley Bill and say like, Hey man, I know you got this no trade clause, but you know, we'll help you make, we'll help you whatever, wherever you want to go. Of course you pick the team and we're going to do our best to make this happen. So it, it, it just, it sounds weird. It sounds crazy, but I, I kind of could see it happening. So I'm at a, I'm at a five. I'm right. I'm even, I'm right in the middle. It's hard to believe because I just – because Ted with the Never Ever Tank thing, would he actually start a rebuild and start from the bottom and lose games, you know, get a bunch of lottery picks? Like you said, this is a great year to do it because, you know, it's, a, it's just a darn good draft. It's a it's a, it's a a deep draft. You can find somebody at pick 20, maybe like Jordan Hawkins out of UConn, and he could be an impact player because they just have a lot of good guys in the draft. So it's an intriguing article for sure. Um, the only thing that makes me reluctant – uh, thing that they will actually rebuild is bringing back Wes because I just feel like the new GM, you should give him full autonomy to pick from top to bottom, who the coach is, who's the training staff going to be, who, who whoever, uh, assistant um, player development, whoever, whatever coach, 
I just feel like the GM should start fresh and find that coach. I mean, I I I, I do want to see West succeed. I'm rooting for West. It just has been underwhelming the past two, past two seasons with defense, 15 plus point leads blown. Um, but if, if West can really turn around, I'm all for it. I really am. Yeah, I mean, I think they're really going to see what he can do with a young roster. And I think that's what they give him that one year to see if the, if the, the whoever the GM is comes in and finds the personnel to implement the system. But I mean, I'm at seven, man, because it just his you know his actions going into the offseason tell me that he's trying to change make changes man you know get rid of tommy because look we all expected that we were going to the next season as tommy's our gm so the fact that he's not in a job no more surprised everybody and if you're telling me you knew man that either you're in the inside or you're lying i'm just saying like nobody knew because i was surprised and like you said you know i was more expecting that if anybody was going to go first it's going to be west Sunsell. but you know, like, like you said, I want him to succeed. I don't want to see anybody fail, you know, especially, you know, the fact that, you know, his father has done great things for this organization. So, you know, I want to see him succeed, man. But, um, man, it's going to be it, – it's this new GM's got a lot of work to do because, like you said, he's got to come in. He's got to get Bill the one to go. And then – because Bill may not want to go because, he, look, here's the man here. <laughs> so, he, you know, really – what behooves you know really what makes him want to go anywhere because he's the man just to go somewhere and be a second third option which really in reality he is a second or third option on the championship team but you know it's just it, it's a tall task but i believe that this is the all season man i say it again this is one this is a one of the deepest drafts we've had in a while and like we said all the time one through 12 are guys who can come in and they could be impactful right away and i believe that i want this team to have two uh first rounders I mean, we need another first rounder you know because it's deep man um, even if we, you know, uh, and I know in the, we're going to talk about who stays, who goes and, uh, what we predict on that front, but you know, I, I'm going to do a prediction. I think that not everybody walks. I, I see bill being traded. I see Kyle Kuzma walking and I see them resigning KP. I think that, I think that is going to happen. Um, I, I see Kyle Kuzma maybe walking unless he throw him a crazy amount of money, but you know, just to go, just to go to zero. No, nah, I think they're going to keep one of the, uh, the solid three. I think it's gonna be KP. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is the off season to make moves, man. We cannot mess this up. I'm telling you, because this, I'm telling you, this is a deep draft and we have an opportunity to really, really make impact, impactful moves. And really, if you go into rebuild mode, if we're smart this off season, it doesn't have to be a long rebuild. We just have to have some competency in the GM office, man. If we come into this off season with, with some sense, we could be looking at a three-year rebuild. I mean, just, it's just, you gotta be smart on the draft picks and really, on the return that you potentially can get back for bill or even if you do a sign and trade for kuzma which if i was gm and i would do all that also so you know like i said the gm coming in has a tall task man because there's a lot that needs to be done but man if he gets it right this could be a new era in, in wizards basketball man so I, i'm optimistic i really am right and the two gms that everybody's you know kind of salivating over that really that people really want masai ujiri had to trade demar DeRozan for Kawhi. bob myers had to come in and trade monte ellis after they had him many years so um, to make this job an attractive job, you have to let them make moves and have autonomy. Uh, the best thing for the Wizards right now, we're the only GM job open. I realized that, uh, you know, of course, after the move was made. So we have no competition at this point, which is really weird, which is a great thing for the Wizards. Um, but if Tad wants to get the best hire, then, you know, he can't just have his hands tied behind his back and say, hey, you can't trade Bill. I just want you to, uh, you know, build around Bill. That's just not an attractive job. So, um, but, yeah, we're going to get to one question here. Uh, somebody submitted through Twitter, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the playoffs and then wrap it up for tonight. But before we do get to that, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is super easy. I use it all the time. The D.C. Defenders are going to be in the playoffs, so I had to use it one time. It was tough to get tickets for the D.C. Defenders game because they've been playing so well, but I used Game Time, and it made it super, super easy to buy tickets for the Defenders game. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. What are some flash deals and last-minute tickets? Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Images of seat views, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job last protection, and more. Get images of your seats before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps in your set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use Locked On NBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account 
and redeem code locked on NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel, right now, I put in a bet for Giannis to get over twenty six and a half points uh, tonight against the Miami Heat. He's got seventeen and a half, so it's looking pretty good. Also, bet on Bam on a bio to get under on thirty two and a half points, rebounds, and assists. He has seven points or seven points, rebounds, and assists at the half. So that's looking pretty darn good right now. Uh, Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now new customers can step step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. All right, so we'll quickly uh, go through this one question here from, let's see here. Somebody hit us up on Twitter. It was uh, King of Poe on Twitter, uh, K-I-N-G-O-F-P-O-E. He says, Locked on Wizards, rebuild on what? Gambling in the draft on someone and some one and done hopefuls? You graded Chris S. Porzingis as A's. Why would, you tear to the, why would you tear the entire roster down? We need to create a Miami Heat type of team a bunch of role players with balanced scoring, tough team defense, and scrappy mentality. Brandon, what's your reaction to uh, this question and this statement by King of Pope? <laughs> I mean, it's it's a perspective. I mean, I mean, the, the solid three has proven they can only go so far, man. I mean, yeah, we graded them A because individually, uh, I believe that Kyle Kuzma and Chris Zingas got A's, but it, collectively as a core, I mean, it, I. I don't know. It really depends on your perspective. Do you think that the uh, what we've seen so far is enough to judge a solid three? I don't know. I mean, if, we'll see. But one thing's for sure: Bradley Bill's not a, not a number one option. So if they, you know, would they they hold on to this solid three? The ball has to the run, offense has to be run through either Kyle Kuzma or Kirsten Zings. That's it. You know, with uh, Bradley Bill being the number one option, man, it just ain't gonna work. So um, I, I see where you're coming from, but I mean, look, everything's a risk. I mean, everything's a risk. You know, not every free agent signing pans out. Not every draft pans out. I mean, you know, if you look at where Stephen Curry was drafted and who was drafted ahead of him, come on. I mean, it's just, you, you just never know, man. I mean, people forget that Dame Lillard was actually not even, it was an afterthought in his draft class c- coming out of Weaver State, man. Very few people knew about Dame Lillard at the time, unless you knew college hoops. I mean, you just never know, man. You just never know. So, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, man, but you got to take risk. And that, that is just the business of, of any major sport, man, is that as a GM, you got to take risk. So, yeah, looking at it, you know, the solid three, they may be entertaining, fun to watch. But what do I always say? You know, the the goal is championship. And this solid three has proven that, one, they, they can only take you so far. And, two, you got to pay all of them. And do you really want to give out 95% of your cap to a core of Bradley Bills, your number one option, Kyle Kuzma and Christopher Zings. Because I'm not, to be honest with you. I'm just not. So, yeah, I, I see where he's coming from, man. I get it. You know, when you got guys who are all-star level guys, you want to hold on to them, and I get that. But, again, man, you know, it's not it's not really so much about the solid three. Is that you still got to fill out the rest of the team. You know, you still got to go out here and find that point guard. You still got to go out here and find that 3D and wing. And, and, that's, the sh- and, that's, and that's another dynamic that we're not thinking about is that Bringing a rookie point guard into the situation is not – that's a hard thing to do, especially because, look, point guard is your quarterback. It's, it's hard to be that rookie coming in and controlling a locker room, man. You know, so that – you know, it's just – there's a lot of dynamics, but there's always risk. And so I understand where you're coming from, but there's risk. And I believe with this draft class, you need to take a risk because there's a lot of talent there, man. There's a lot of athleticism. You got high flyers and guys who can play some ball in this draft, man. So if I'm willing – I'm definitely willing to take a risk on one or two players in this draft. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you've you been trying to do this this approach of the middle build, and it hasn't gotten you anywhere. It's gotten you 35 wins at best. Um, they got you a play-in berth, and you got gentlemen swept at best. Um, so even with the solid three, they were 16 and 19 together. Um, when Kuz and Bill played, they were 38 and 42. When uh, Kuz and Zingas played, they were 23 and 36. When Bill and Porzingis played together, they were 19 and 23. So all losing records together when they all when they play together or two of the three. Um, and they miss a good amount of games. Um, you know, Brad missed a couple games. Porzingis missed a couple games. But, yeah, you brought a point guard position. Yeah, I mean, that's what it looks like. Our point guard 
is going to have to be either Monte Morris again or whether they trade him or we're going to have to rely on a rookie like Anthony Black or Kassan Wallace. So it's just a lot of pressure to put on a rookie point guard to really uh, run the show and lead the ship and, uh, and lead a team to a playoffs. It's, it's just a tall task and it's a tall ask uh, to do that. And it's just like with the, with the salary cap space, uh, it looks like that's really the the most realistic option unless they trade Monte and DeLon and, and Denny or, or Corey or whoever. Uh, or do a sign and trade with Kuz and try to get a point guard. So it's just not a lot of options out there at the point guard position either. So um, it would have been tough for Tommy if he would have stayed. Um, it's going to be tough for the new GM to to keep this team competitive to try and make the play-in as well. But um, for what King of Post said, comparing to the Miami Heat, I mean, you don't have Pat Riley walking through that door as a GM. You don't have Jimmy Butler walking through that door just being a dog and just being a, a, a leader and just being um, nasty on the court, just bringing that edge and the tenacity, that heat culture. Um, you don't have Eric Spolster walking that door as a head coach. Um, I think West is still learning, but there's just a lot of people, a lot of elements that you just don't have that the Miami ha- Miami Heat have that they've been able to develop and bring guys in like Gabe Vincent, um, Omer Yurt Seven, Max Strews, Duncan Robinson, so many guys that were undrafted second round picks that they've been able to develop. The Wizards haven't really been able to do that. They're starting to do it. Like you said, Amber Nichols, she's done a heck of a job with the go-go. Quinn Jackson looks like a, a solid player. Uh, Jordan Goodwin looks like a good player. Jay Huff looks like a good player. So they're starting to get there, but they just don't have that heat culture. We don't have an identity. Uh, Corey Kispert has said it. We just don't have an identity. The, the Miami Heat have had an identity under under Pat Riley for years. So it, it's just hard to say. It, 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 you just make it sound. You, King of Poe is just kind of saying it's like it's easy to do that and, and replicate what the Miami Heat have done. So, um yeah, I, I just don't see that. He said, uh, and graded KP Kuzma as A's. I didn't grade those two as A's. I gave, um, I didn't really grade them yet. Kuzma, I give a B. The only reason why I don't give him an A is because of the shot selection some of the shooting. Now, some of it's not on him because of the grenade shots that he got at the end and just some of the tough shots he had to take. But some of the decision-making was a little iffy. He did take some crazy shots. He, um, there's some statistics shows that he took a lot of shots to get some of the points. The shooting percentage, The shooting percentages were not good for Kuzma. Um, KP, the only thing the knock on him is the second halves and rebound. I thought he should rebound. I think he should rebound the ball more for a guy who's seven foot three. And the second half, the first half, he's really good. In the second half, he'll have what 25 points in the first half and two points in the second half. So that's the only reason why I don't give Porzingis a uh, A. I give him a B. I give Kuzma a B as well. I, I give KP a B plus, maybe a minus. I give Kuzma a B, but I thought Kuzma played really well. I thought he, I thought he had a good season for the most part, but. Um, just a little inconsistent at times, and then just a little uh, too gun happy shooting the ball. But we needed it though because we don't have a lot of creators other than other than Brad and Porzingis. So King of Paul, I would love to have the Miami Heat culture. I would love uh, some of the things that they did. You know, having Udonis Haslam as a as a coach on the bench too. Um, I love some of the things they they do. You know, having lesser talent and making it to the Eastern Conference Finals last year, going toe to toe with the Bucks right now. Um, I love what the Miami do, but we're we're, we're we look a little ways a little ways from. The Miami Heat right now. Yeah, we are a thousand miles away from the Miami Heat, but you know, I think we can get there. And it starts mm-hmm. with what we're doing now is finding that leadership in the front office. You know, if we find a really good GM, then we're we're taking a step in the right direction. You know, we can get there, but we're not there right now, like you said. And you know, this solid three, they're they're entertaining to watch, but again, you know, like we said it before, you know, bringing a rookie point guard in this situation, that's not it's not easy because you know, like I said. You know, point guard is your quarterback. You know, you're going into an established team with stars. So, I, I you know, again, and a lot of the players, like you said, Kispert, you know, Kyle Kuzma says something about the lack of vision. You know, they, they need a vision. So, yeah, you know, we I think we can get there, but we're not there yet, man. You know, and then, but we're we are taking the right steps. And I think GM and see what we got with West one year, man. Because, like I said, I want him to succeed, but. Shoot, you new GM? <laughs> yeah, he's got to he's got to make a huge leap this next year, man, because he's literally coaching for his job. So you know, I, I hope the best, man. I hope he comes in. And he has a good year on the bench, man. I really do. But you know, and it, it really, I mean, if you look at his team, period. You know, everybody has things to work on. You know, Denny contract here, so <laughs> he's got to work on that shot. I'm just saying, you know, contract here. You know, you try and get that bag. So yeah, everybody's got to work on things, man. But I think that it starts with what we're doing now. So, you know, I'm optimistic. I am. 
Definitely, yeah. We're going to finish off with a quick playoff prediction, but we're, we're going to get a quick word from Brandon. Yes, sir. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. So you're asking, how does it work? Well, you pick two, two, six players, and if they go score more or less than a Prize Picks pro- uh, projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. That is right. 25 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes the National Basketball Association, the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NHL, PGA, college football, men's and women's college basketball, soccer, the WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, the MMA, boxing, disc golf, girl basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Is that easy, safe, and fast withdrawals? Currently operational in over 30 states and our neighbors to the north in Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to theprizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for the instant deposit match up to $100. So, yes, yeah, sir. So we're just gonna do a quick prediction uh, of the playoff series that are left. Uh, so, Bucks Heat. Who do you got winning that series? Miami. Oh no, 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 no! I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I said an M word. Milwaukee. <laughs> I had to catch myself. <laughs> now, nah, Milwaukee wins that, man. I mean, as long as uh, Giannis is healthy, they win that game. Now, if he goes down with an injury, man, they've proven that. You know, he's so central to this team that Miami has a chance, but. As long as Giannis is healthy, nah, Milwaukee, easy. I'm with you on that one, too. I got the Bucks winning that one. All right. Um, who else is left? Um, let's go uh, Kings Warriors. I think that's the closest one out of all of them. Ooh, man. I mean, Fox, he's out for the next game. Yeah, that's – I mean, as long as he's not out for more than one game, they got a chance because, I mean, he, he's the leader of that team, man. He's the point guard. He's, he's the quarterback, and it shows. He's – he runs that team. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play without him. I mean, that's that's hard, man, because the Kings look good. But, man, I'm going to go with Golden State because just experience. You know, experience – playoff experience is big, man. So I'm going to roll with Golden State. Yeah, I am too. Uh, Stephen Clay and Andrew Wiggins is playing well. As long as Draymond, you know, doesn't get suspended, poking him right in the eye or something, <laughs> uh, chess. Uh, but, yeah, Fox, Monk. Uh, Monk has been unbelievable the series. Yeah. Ke- Keegan Murray had a heck of a game in the last game. Went down to the wire. But the Kings, they just make some boneheaded decisions down the stretch. Uh, Harrison Barnes took a bad shot. Um, Monk took a bad shot down the stretch, too. But they still cut it to one. So it's a, it's a neck to neck, neck, neck and neck series. But without De'Aaron Fox there, man, he's been the engine to the car. Um, it's eerily similar to when John Wall got injured in that Hawk series. He hurt his hand. And now De'Aaron Fox hurt his hand as well. Um, when John Wall was ha- having a heck of a seri- series against the Atlanta Hawks. Um, but I, I, I got Steph being clutch and finishing that one out and Clay as well. Um, and, and the defending champs being the Kings. Um, Grizzlies, Lakers, that one looks like it's kind of getting to the end there. We'll see. Jaws, Jaws coming. He he was back. He had a good game. Hawks, Celtics is already over with. Nuggets, Timberwolves pretty much over with. Kawhi is missing so many games with the Clippers. So I guess the, the closest one really is the Lakers and Grizzlies. Who do you got one of that one? Man, that's a hard one, man, because I, I'll say this. Nobody on the Lakers can, can guard John Morant. I mean, what was it? Saturday night, man. I mean, that fourth quarter, he scored, what, 20, 20, 20 plus by himself? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's electrifying, man. I mean, his ability to finish, they leave him unguarded with three. What's wrong with you? <laughs> he, I mean, he can flat out score anytime he wants. But that's the thing, though. How did they beat them? They shut down everybody else. Because, I mean, you, you know, you got Brooks, man, which you know what Brooks can do, man. He's that he's that guy in the league now who's a tough guy. You know, he likes to talk stuff, get, you know, get physical. But, I mean, when his shot's off, when Desmond Baines' shot's off, you know, so if they can shut down everybody else and just let Jaw do his thing, I think the Lakers can win. So, man, yeah. I'm rolling with the Lakers, man. I got the Lakers winning this series because of experience. And on the flip side, you know, outside of Jalen – um. Jalen Jackson, man, I don't see anybody who can stop Anthony Davis. You know, Anthony Davis, when he's healthy, oh, man. Really? Oh, absolutely. I mean, oh, <laughs> hey, look, I don't even want to start. <laughs> I don't even want to start. Not, but, look, Rui's been playing some good basketball, man. Look, watch out for Rui. He, he's been playing some good ball. So, and, then, I mean, he really has found his place in with the Lakers, man, because he's comfortable over there. So, 
Yeah, I got the Lakers. I think they they eventually win. I think it goes to seven, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got the Lakers, too. But we're going to wrap it up here. We got Troy Halliburton coming on tomorrow to talk about Tommy Shepard being fired. Um, he did call it, man. He said Tommy could be fired. So, I mean, our guy Troy, he, he's definitely got some inside scoops going on. So, make sure you guys uh, listen for tomorrow's episode. I just want to thank you guys for being locked up. What's your first listen every day? Every day. Every day or is tomorrow on the show. Troy Halliburton will be on there as our special guest. I want to thank you guys for uh, listening once again. Hell to the Wizards. <laughs>